Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. This video is a video in response to a comment that I received over our Discord server. The comment I received was from Zimi, and they asked, how would I make a bow which when you hold down the click, it triggers an event that fires a projectile based on how much you held it down? This is a really great question, and it segues me into a type of video that I've been wanting to make for quite some time now. I've been wanting to take footage of popular video games showing specific game mechanics from that video game and then I've been wanting to break down that footage and explain exactly how they're probably getting that game mechanic to work. And so in addition to the response I gave Zimi over Discord, I wanted to do this video. And probably one of the best examples of a popular video game with a very good bow mechanic is Overwatch and Hanzo. So here's some gameplay of Hanzo that I previously recorded, and I first have to find a good spot for us to demonstrate his bow mechanic. I'm then going to demonstrate his bow mechanic, and every time he fires an arrow, the footage will get slower and slower. All right, did you catch all the key elements of this bow mechanic? If you didn't, it's all right. We're going to walk through it together. Now, sadly, showing gameplay only demonstrates the visual components to a game mechanic. And so let's first explain the visual components, and then I'll try to explain what's most likely happening behind the scenes or in the code. So first off, we have our character model, which is Hanzo, and then Hanzo has his bow and arrow. And his bow and arrow can be separate models, especially if he ends up dropping them when he dies. Then everything that the character model and the bow and arrow do as far as local movement is animation. And as far as this bow mechanic, there's four main animations that Hanzo cycles through. The first animation would be his starting idle position, which that animation can have a little bit of movement to it, but not a whole lot. You basically just want to make it look like your character is breathing. The next animation is his draw animation, where he actually pulls back on the bowstring. And this animation is triggered when you first click down with the left mouse button. Now at any point of this animation, which this animation is relatively slow, the player could release the left mouse click. If they do that, then they would end up skipping the third animation and go right into the fourth animation, which is the fire reload animation. But we'll talk about that animation after the third animation. The third animation is what happens when the player has fully drawn back the bow. And this would be another idle animation, an animation that loops through itself to make it look like the character is breathing, but he would be in the position of having his bow fully drawn. Then if the player releases the left mouse click, we transition into the fire reload animation. This is where the arrow from our character model disappears from the player's view. Hanzo then releases the bowstring, which then animates the bow. A few particle systems are played, and then Hanzo reloads another arrow and goes back into the idle animation. So with that all explained, let's go through these animations frame by frame. So first off, we have our idle animation, which we don't need to go through frame by frame, but this is where the bow is lowered and he hasn't drawn back on the bowstring, and there's a little bit of a movement to make it look like he's breathing. Then immediately when I left click the mouse button, Hanzo brings up the bow and pulls back on the bowstring. Now this frame here is from the draw idle animation. This is where the bow is fully drawn and we're just waiting for the player to release the left mouse click. The very first frame of our animation, when the player releases the left mouse click, you'll notice that the arrow has disappeared completely. We also have a particle system that's now playing, which gives that blue flash effect. The next frame of our animation, you can see that Hanzo has now released the bowstring and it is contracting. Now in this frame, you can see that the bow has a little bit of a wobble to it, and in this frame, you can see that our bow has almost returned to its normal position and the particle effect is about finished. Now, part of this fire animation is the reload for the next shot. 
So here you can see that Hanzo's arm is starting to come into frame. And if I continue playing, there he loads the next arrow. Now I'll play through a few shots of me rapid firing and I've slowed down the footage so that you can see that at any point of our draw animation, we can cancel that and transition into our fire animation. And here we have the animation for his rapid fire ability which adds additional particle effects and it swaps out the projectile. And here we have just one animation of his detection arrow. The now the last part of the visual components for this bow mechanic that I want to talk about is the transition from the arrow in the animation and the arrow that's the projectile. And so we'll go back to this frame, which is right before I release the left mouse click. Here you can see that we still have the arrow that's part of our character object. However, in the very next frame, that arrow disappears. And in this frame, you can now see the projectile, which is this little white shape here. And in this frame, our arrow hits the wall and plays another particle system, which is that little yellow explosion. Now if we went up to the wall, we would see an arrow model sticking in the wall. And my guess is that arrow model is actually a low poly version of the arrow that's part of our character animation. And so we have one model that's part of our character's animation, and that's a high poly model. And then we have a low poly model, which is the arrow that sticks in whatever you hit. But I bet there's even a third object that's implemented, which is for the projectile as it's flying through the air. And so to recap all the visual components of this bow mechanic, we have our character, and our character has his bow and arrow. There's then four different animations that we cycle through for the bow mechanic. And there's probably at least three different arrow objects that are incorporated. So now that we've talked about the visual components, let's talk about what's most likely happening behind the scenes or in the code. For Hanzo's bow mechanic, there's most likely some sort of variable like a float which is for his draw time. During his first idle animation, this variable would be set to zero. Then as soon as the player starts clicking the left mouse button, we would start incrementing that variable. Now there would be a max limit to this variable so that when the bow is fully drawn, we don't keep adding to that value. Then at the point our player releases the left mouse button, whatever that float value is, gets incorporated into the speed of the arrow and also the damage that the arrow does. Now remember, when the player releases the left mouse button, it's not actually the arrow that Hanzo is holding that goes flying off and does the damage. Instead, that arrow object disappears from our player's view and a new arrow object is instantiated out in front of the bow. In Unity terms, there's probably an empty game object floating out in front of Hanzo's bow, which is used as a transform to instantiate this arrow object on. It then applies the given velocity based on the draw time to that arrow object, and it assigns that arrow a damage value. When that arrow connects with an object, if that object is an enemy player, it applies the damage to that player. It then destroys itself and in its place, it instantiates the low poly arrow model that sticks into things. And if the object the arrow collides with is a wall or an inanimate object, it could end up breaking that inanimate object or it could apply a bullet hole texture to that object, making the wall look like it's cracked. And from what I can tell, that's everything that goes into Hanzo's bow mechanic from Overwatch. Now enough with this tutorial, let's pwn some noobs.
Hey, thanks for watching to the end of this video. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or join our Discord server. For more content just like this one, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.